Now that we've built our hardware, it's time to take control over the robot. Let's get started using some Python code here. This is a first look at some really basic code uh, that we're going to be using to control the robot. Uh, so this is uh, the first thing that we need to do, uh, like typical for Python, is to import our libraries. In this case, we're importing the Raspberry Pi General Purpose I.O. library. We're going to use time to do a little bit of uh, sleep here as well. In the initial setup, we set uh, this mode. This controls how we number the pins. This is a standard uh, piece you'll have in pretty much every uh, startup file, the beginning of your code. Uh, same thing to turn off uh, most of our warnings. Then we're going to set up our pins uh, in output mode. So pins 7, 8, 9, and 10 are hardwired into that controller board, uh, and we need to configure them as output pins. All right, so now after they're configured, I'm going to turn them off uh, just by setting the value on each one to zero. Uh, and then I'm going to turn the right mode forward by turning pin 7 off. It already is. And then turning pin 8 on. So that just sends the one out there. All right, and then at the same time, I'm going to turn my left motor forward. Uh, so pin 9 stays low, pin 10 goes high. I'm going to sleep for a second, uh, and then I'm going to clean up, which will reset and turn all the motors to zero. Okay, so let's take a look at how this actually works. First thing I want to do uh, is log into my robot. Okay, so now if you recall, we pulled down uh, the code. We're going to go take a look at that code. Uh, it's in our robot workspace uh, under the source code. Uh, and this uh, robot is GameStop. I'm sorry, this robot is Pool City. And we're going to be start looking uh, start by looking at the tests, uh, and this is where some of the sample code is. First one we're going to work with is GPIO test, which is the code we just looked at. So you see here, this is uh, just the code that we just saw. Um, import the libraries, um, set this up, set up the pins, turn all the motors off, turn the right one on, left one on, wait for a second, and then shut everything down. All right, so let's see what happens. Uh, do you think this one's going to run? Right. And no, I didn't because we haven't installed the library yet. If you recall, during our setup, uh, we didn't install anything specific. Uh, this library typically is included in a Raspbian build, but it's not included with your Ubuntu server build. No problem, though. We'll just go ahead and install it. This installs rather quickly, and if you'll notice while we're installing, uh, we get both the Python and the Python 3 versions. Uh, so we'll be doing all our coding in Python 3 rather than Python 2. Okay, so that's done. Uh, now let's go ahead and run this again. Now we still get an error, uh, and if you'll notice in this this case, uh, it's because we don't have access to the device that we need to control GPIO output. That's reserved for root. Uh, and so we're actually going to continue here uh, running the rest of this as root. Uh, of course, uh, there are other ways to get around this to gain uh, limited access to uh, device mem, but for the interest of working through these tutorials, we're just going to continue running the rest of this as root. Now, um, And there we go. We heard something going on. Uh, let's shift over to the robot cam and see what we see. So here's a view of the robot. I'm going to run the same code again. Pretty straightforward. You see the wheels turning. 
Okay, so we're good. We actually now uh, do have access to run some code on the robot. Uh, so that's a great start. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is actually change the speed. If you recall, the only thing that we did so far is turn the wheels on or off. I'd rather have a, uh, a variable velocity, be able to turn them off at a different speed. And we do that by using pulse width modulation. Uh, in pulse width modulation, we're actually going to change the duty cycle, change how long the uh, current and the, the voltage is actually sent to that motor. All right, so what we were doing originally was just simply turning it on. That's a 100% duty cycle. What we want to do is cycle it so that it's not on all the time, but only a certain percentage of the time. And that percentage is what's known as the duty cycle. So here you see the typical code that we'll use to do this. Uh, we have a frequency which decides how many, it defines how many times every second we're going to send out the pulse uh, that we're going to keep high for, not for 100% of the time, but a little bit less than that. All right, so that's our frequency and that's set up when we set up our GPIO uh, uh, for this pin. It's built in uh, that I can set it up as a pulse width modulated pin. All right, uh, so then all I have to do is change this duty cycle. Uh, I change it to 50%, and then 50% of the time it's going to be high, 50% of the time it's going to be low, and it's going to change at 20 times a second. Okay, uh, think of this, uh, the area underneath these curves is essentially the amount of work. So the higher the duty cycle, the more work is going to go on, the faster the motor is going to go. Um, and then the less the duty cycle is, the less power I'm sending, the less that the, the motors are actually going to turn. Okay, so we are going to give that a shot um, and, and, and add speed to our, uh, to our, our motor. Again, we're still in our tests area. In this case, we're going to look at the uh, motor test. Again, we're starting uh, out with creating some classes. Because we want everything to be event driven by the time we're done, these classes will help us uh, create uh, some better code. Um, all we're doing is adding the pulse width modulation, so we don't change any of our includes here. Um, but what we've added is this, um, this motor class where when I initialize it, I specify the forwards and backwards pin. By default, I'm going to have a frequency of 20. Um, I also put in a, a, the ability to cap a speed on there. So if you want to, you can limit the speed of how fast your motors uh, are actually going to go. All right, so um, I set up my GPIO pins, um, record a few things here, uh, and then I open up the, the GPIO pulse width modulation for these pins. All right, so this gives me an object, a handle into an object where I can actually uh, set the duty cycle for them. Uh, initially, I want the duty cycle to be set to zero. That's what this stop does. Okay, then I have a few utility functions here. Uh, just simply move the motor forward, move the motor backward, or stop the motor. Uh, and then this is the wrapper that handles uh, all the work, if you will, uh, for the motor. That's the move function. It enforces the speed limit. And then uh, it simply turns on the motor. So if the speed is less than zero, it starts the backwards pin. Uh, the, uh, it sets the backwards pin in motion at the negative speed. So because the speed is negative, this double negative turns into a positive. Uh, so this turns on the backwards pin. Uh, otherwise, if it's greater than zero, I turn on the forwards pin. Uh, and this just starts that um, pulse width modulation at the given speed from zero to 100. That's our duty cycle. So that encapsulates the whole concept of a motor. Uh, the next thing that I want to think about uh, is let's, let's, let's define the wheelie itself. So the wheelie, uh, which is our robot, the wheelie has two wheels on it, so uh, two motors on it. So I'm going to create the left wheel and the right wheel, which are just motors, uh, and then I define which pins move the motor forward or backward. Uh, those pins are actually hardwired into that 
that board that sits on top of the Raspberry Pi. If you use a different board, you may be able to or may have to use different pins for your motors. Now we're going to uh, define how to move the wheelie. This is a little bit different than moving an individual motor, uh, although stop is the same uh, and forwards is the same uh, and backwards is the same as well. Now that we have two motors, we can actually, or two wheels, we can actually turn. Uh, so we can go left and we can go right. Uh, and then I've added on for each of these the ability to set a speed. By default, they're going to go full speed, 100, uh, but uh, you're able to, to override this and specify, uh, you know, some slower speed if you want. Here's our simple uh, main wrapper that just demonstrates how the wheelie class works. Uh, so the wheelie class has a go forward. Uh, our, uh, we instantiate the wheelie class. Then we call the go forward method. Wait a second. Call the go left, go backwards, go right, and then stop. So this should cause, uh, once we run this code, this should cause the wheelie to go forwards uh, and then go backwards, or go forwards, go left, go backwards, uh, and then go right. So we'll see that in motion in just a second. Okay, so our robot's ready to go. Let's see what happens when we run this. There it goes. Forwards, turn left, backwards, turn right. See that one more time. Forwards, turn, backwards, turn. Okay, so we're back in business. We actually are able to control our robot with code. So we're well on our way. All right, so we want to Rosify our robot now. Uh, and the reason for doing that is to create this more event-driven model. So let's take a look at how our code changes for this. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the roshelloworld.py. That's, again, in the test directory. First thing we need to do is add a few imports, add the ROS libraries. This is the ROS client library for Python. Uh, and within that library, we also want to import the node class. The node class, if you recall, is the container. Then I also want to import the messages. Right? So this is the message class that we use uh, to exchange data back and forth. In our case, we're going to be listening on a topic uh, and we're going to be listening for a string. So this is our standard string message that we're going to import for, for, to use within ROS. The rest of the setup is going to stay the same. The motor and the wheelie classes don't change. But now I add a new class that's a subclass from the ROS node class. So I inherit everything from the ROS Python node, uh, but I create a minimal subscriber. That's what I'm going to call this class. Um, and the first thing I do is uh, in the initializer, I am going to uh, create my super class. I'm going to call my inherited uh, functions, my inherited setup, so that all the raw setup uh, goodness happens here. But after the raw setup is done, I want to create a subscription. Right? So this create subscription method is built into the ROS node. It's part of the ROS node. And this allows me to subscribe on a topic. If you recall, the main uh, things that I did with the node were work with topics, services, and actions. In this case, I'm creating a topic that I'm going to listen to. So uh, on this topic, uh, uh, you'll see this create subscription requires four different arguments. Uh, one argument is, is the type of object that the subscription is going to be uh, uh, exchanging. So in this case, it's the string method that we created up above. Uh, the second thing is what is the topic itself that we're listening on? So we're going to listen on the move topic uh, to see if we can get a string command in on the move topic. Then there's the callback. Anytime a message is received on the move topic, we're going to execute this callback. Finally, the last argument is how large the queue is for this subscription. We're going to queue up up to 10 messages. If there's more than 10 messages, they'll just fall off the queue. Um, 
So that's all we have to do here. Uh, then I'm going to instantiate the wheelie class, uh, and that's how I'm going to gain access to the wheelie things that we created earlier. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual callback. Uh, hopefully this is simpler than you had expected. Uh, the callback, uh, the listener callback that we set up, uh, just simply takes the message as an argument. We told it what message type it is. Uh, this is the standard messages string. Uh, and that message uh, has a data attribute. And the data attribute is the string itself. So this lets us accept in the string that came in on the topic we're listening on, the topic move. What is that string? If, it, if the string that comes in is forward, I'm going to move forward. If it's backwards, I'm going to move backwards. I'm just simply using code that I already created with my Willy class. Uh, and that's it. A little bit more in the main wrapper. Uh, instead of instantiating the wheelie, we saw that that's already instantiated uh, in the subscriber class. I'm going to create the minimal subscriber class. Uh, so this initializes itself and, and initializes the robot. Then I call this spin. This is the block. This is where uh, the code blocks and waits for external events to do things. And when the external events happen, it's going to call the callback. So we saw what the callback looks like. So this simply sits here uh, until we're completely done with our robot. Once we uh, receive a shutdown command, we do a little bit of cleanup and exit. So let's take a look at the robot now. Uh, so here we have the imports. We still have the same motor class as we saw before. Still have the same wheelie class as we saw before. Uh, and here's our subscriber node um, that actually creates the subscription on the move topic. Uh, it's a string type subscription and it runs these different commands. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and run that. If you see, I don't have the module named RCLPY. That's because I uh, sudoed to bash. So let me source. And let's run that again. Again, remember this source sets up the environment variables and the pathing that's necessary for us to find all these uh, different ROS parts. So this is running on the robot. Now what I'd like to do is to send a message to the robot from my laptop. So my rap laptop has ROS installed. You could also send the message from the robot itself, uh, but I'd rather just send it from the laptop for the case of this example. So I have the robot running, waiting for messages, uh, and then I'm going to issue this command on my laptop. Again, set up the uh, initial environment. And then I'm going to use the topic publish. So this ROS2 topic pub uh, publishes on a topic and I'm going to publish on and it takes these three arguments I'm going to publish on the move topic and the type of thing I'm going to publish is this string message uh, and then this is the actual data in the string message uh, so the data is going to be the forward string or the stop string or the reverse or the left The data that's sent, the, the data argument, uh, when you send it from the command prompt, is in YAML format. Okay, as soon as I hit return here, I'm going to expect the wheels uh, to start moving. Okay, by default, the ROS topic pub cycles. Uh, every second and publishes the message every second. We only need to publish it once for us to start moving, uh, but now I need to stop it. So 
So there we see I published the stop message. Uh, similarly, I can publish the reverse message and the wheels will go backwards. So interesting here you see that the reverse is not the right command. If I'm not mistaken, it's actually backwards. There we go. And then let's go ahead and stop. Okay, so I sent a message from my laptop over the network uh, to my robot, caused my robot uh, to move uh, in a direction that I asked it to, um, and that was all uh, done through ROS. Uh, and so this is, again, this is working towards an event-driven model.